if all of you will stand and Clayton, we're proud to have you back. And I would like you to lead us in pledge allegiance, if you would please. Uh, let's present arms and, and pledge the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I want y'all to continue eating while I talk because I've got a little housekeeping that I've got to take care of. First of all, uh, it's time, it's getting time for you to pay your annual dues, your membership fee. I, I didn't have a chance to go down to the storage and pick up the farms that uh, come from the headquarters. It would have been the new new farms, but they're uh, back there on the back table. There, it's a 2009 membership farm, but that doesn't matter. If you get that, give the money to Bill Watts, he'll know, he'll put you down as a, a 2011 uh, member. That's the first thing. Uh, also, from now on, we're going to be meeting on the last Thursday night of the month. We have been meeting for Thursday nights, but a lot of times happens like this this week, where where the third Monday night when the ladies meet and the fourth Thursday is in the same week, and they tell me that that gets them meeting too much, so. You know, I'm gonna keep the women happy, and uh, we're gonna we're gonna, we're gonna meet on the fourth. I mean, on the last Thursday uh, of of every month, and so whatever date that happens to be, but it's last Thursday. What? Do what? March thirty first. Okay, next meeting. Also, at the next meeting, we're going to have, if I can get them. I mean, I'm gonna call them. If, I don't know if y'all have noticed or not, but we've got contested school board race. We've got a contested uh, city council race. We've got a contested hospital board race. We've got several candidates running. First time we've had that in a long time. And, you know, once before we had the hospital uh, board people, I mean not talking about the city council, uh, people running for city council, uh, coming to and, and talk to us and so I'm going to try to arrange it where that over the next two meetings we can get them all here because the elections are in May and that way we'll have a chance to meet them and also we'll run an ad to paper I mean run a when we send out our announcements and stuff uh, to the media uh, it, we're going to invite everyone to come so it won't necessarily be so much just strictly Republicans it'd be but I have a feeling there'll be a lot of good Republicans here and they're going to see how great the, 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 those that need converting will see how great we are. Maybe it will convert them. Uh, Irwin Kane was supposed to be here tonight, but Irwin is not going to be able to make it. He called about 30 minutes ago, and he was still stuck in Dallas traffic. But Irwin had told me last week that he would be here if he could get out of, if they got out of committee early enough. He uh, they was having the first committee meeting. Today, I believe the committees that were met today was corrections. If I'm, but it he's on corrections, which uh, is over the correctional institutions in Texas, and he's also on another committee, which is a new committee. He's very excited about being on, and he told me he lobbied the speaker pretty heavily to get on it, and that's reform and efficiency. I believe is government. Is that right, Jim, a reform and efficiency? It's sort of like this. He said it's like a three-legged stool. Think of it this way. You've got the appropriations that appropriate the money. Then you've got uh, the uh, what, Beth? Ways and means. Oh, ways and means, yeah. Ways and means that spend the money. And then you've got the efficiency and reform committee, uh, committee that make sure that the people that are getting the money are spending it properly and, and, it, and the, the whatever uh, entity it is is doing it, doing it is, is actually being worth having. It's sort of like the Sunset Commission, except they, I think, going to have probably a little bit more muscle than the uh, Sunset Commission has. 
because the Sunset Commission they make recommendations to the to the to the House and to the Senate, but this this is actually going to be a committee in it is I mean a committee in the House and uh, which will which will give it just a leg up on getting things done, and so that ought to uh, he ought to really be able to serve us well in that that on that committee. John Cooper told me to remind y'all that he he's going to be sending out a, a a email to everyone. The they're forming what's called a Hopkins County Patriots, which is going to be something like the Tea Party. It's Hopkins County Patriots, and they're going to be doing a constitutional study, and he's going to be leading the study, and uh, that will sometimes in March are going to have the first meeting. He's just not sure yet when, but he wanted me to tell y'all that. Uh, that he's going to be doing that. Now, I can't think of anything else other than that uh, I had talked to Chris because, I, or I should say to Judge Brown, because I, I wasn't sure, you know, anytime you get a legislator while they're in, in session scheduled to meet, you're going to, th even this time of the year, you're going to get them maybe one time out of five they're going to be able to make it another month or two and you're not going to get them I mean they just they they they, they want to do it but they're usually meeting they really go to work now Irwin last week told me that he said I've been down here I think it was five or six weeks and said I hadn't been able to do anything he said man I'm chomping at the bits I want to get to work he said well, we just got our committee assignments and today was the first committee meeting that he had he told me he said we go into the House, House will convene this morning, after it convenes, then they go to the committee, uh, the, to go to different committees. But uh, I had talked to Judge Brown, asked him if he would come. I was planning on having him. If Irwin was here this month, I was going to have Chris next month because I wanted him to talk to you all about what the county is facing. Because I can tell you it's not a pretty picture. But I can also tell you, we've got an intelligent young man for judge, and I get it from a very good source that he's doing a very good job up there. <laughs> and so, if he keeps on getting those report cards from her, uh, I, I know he's doing a good job. But uh, Chris is here tonight, and is uh, and and his assistant, Governor. Uh, uh, my, uh, Rogers, Michael Rogers. My mind went blank for a minute. Had a senior moment there. Governor Rogers is here, and he's 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 Chris's assistant. But I'm going to turn this over to Chris now, and uh, let it, let him give you all the the good news. All right. Thanks, Donnie. Um, yeah. I know some of y'all came here expecting to hear our, our state rep talk, so you're going to have to go to the uh, to the backup plan, but make sure y'all make sure our state rep knows who has his back around here when he starts cutting budgets and we have to start making those tight cuts. Y'all uh, y'all help me remind him uh, who's covering him here on the home front. But um yeah, we are going to face some some pretty tough ta challenges. I was in Austin last week our uh, Texas Association of Counties has come up with a list of at least the initial proposed um, things that are really going to hit us hard. I know one big one uh, the commissioners and I were looking at. Beth, what are we looking at? About $60,000 just from TxDOT, just from the cuts that they're proposing with TxDOT, um, is going <coughs> to, just road and bridge, is going to eat into our pockets about $60,000. There's a lot of other mandates. Um, well, just things that they're looking at cutting with uh, mental health, uh, if we start losing mental health beds, we have to keep them, even if, if we can keep them in the jail, we're going to have to keep them in the jail longer. Just the uh, corrections department, the prisons, they're going to try to start making us keep them here at the county longer, which is going to cost us even more money. So there's a lot of things that we're watching very closely coming down that could be coming down from Austin. And what I've asked Irwin to do is, you know, I know cuts have to be made. That's, you know, that's why he's there. That's what we all support. So we know there's going to be things that have to be done. But 
what we need is a relief valve. If you're going to cut this, don't leave the mandate on us. And that's where you hear these unfunded mandates. It's real easy to go ahead and cut, cut expenditures, but when you tell the county, oh, you still have to keep doing them, we're just not going to fund it, well, that still puts the burden right on the taxpayer's back. So we've got to make sure all of them in Austin do understand that, yeah, cuts, that's what we expect. But we've got to have a relief valve as well. So it's, it's more to it than just getting in there and slashing that budget.